go to Galilee. He found Philip and said to him, follow me. Now Philip was from Bethsaida, the city of Andrew and Peter. Philip found Nathanael and said to him, we have found him about whom Moses in the law and also the prophets wrote, Jesus, son of Joseph from Nazareth. Nathanael said to him, can anything good come out of Nazareth? And Philip said to him, come and see. When Jesus saw Nathanael coming toward him, he said of him, here is truly an Israelite in whom there is no deceit. Nathanael asked him, where did you get to know me? Jesus answered, I saw you under the fig tree before Philip called you. Nathanael replied, Rabbi, you are the son of God. You are the king of Israel. Jesus answered, do you believe because I told you that I saw you under the fig tree? You will see greater things than these. And he said to him, very truly, I tell you, you will see heaven opened and the angels of God ascending and descending upon the Son of Man. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. When people say that God has spoken to them, our first reaction is often doubt. We might think, oh yeah, right, it was God. Are you sure you didn't just hear your own voice in your head? Well, young Samuel in this story we read from scripture has the opposite problem. He thinks he hears the voice of his teacher, the priest, Eli. Three times, Samuel hears a voice in the night, gets up and goes to his teacher, Eli, and says, did you call me? Three times, Eli says, what are you talking about? I didn't say anything. Go back to bed. Until eventually, it clicks. Might this be God's voice speaking to Samuel? There is so much richness in this story. We learn a lot about how God speaks and leads in our lives. For one thing, we do away with any idea that God might not speak to young people. We do away with the idea that God speaks only to ordained people or theologically educated people. Samuel is just a child. He doesn't know very much about official religion yet even though he's part of this rigorous temple training program. That's why he's sleeping in the temple. But the text says that he doesn't yet know the Lord. But God has already given Samuel many gifts, including the gift of prophecy. Now, the whole point of prophecy is that you can listen to God. You can hear a word from God, and even when it's not a word that other people want to hear, you courageously go and tell that word to the people who need to hear it. That's the job description of a prophet. That's who Samuel will grow up to be. But you don't become a prophet overnight. You don't learn to recognize the voice of God overnight. This particular night, Samuel doesn't even have an inkling that God might be speaking to him. But God does speak to young people, even children. And God does help us grow into the people we are meant to be. It's not only God, though, who teaches Samuel how to listen for the divine voice. Eli, the priest, does that as well. This is another important thing we might learn from this story about how God speaks in our lives. Sometimes we need other people to help us recognize it. Many people throughout my life have helped me recognize my gifts for ministry and leadership, often when I was completely unaware of them myself. I would not have become a pastor without that outside affirmation even though I think God also internally led me on that path. I needed both. I needed God's nudge, and I needed the encouragement and mentorship of others to give me confidence and clarity. That's what Eli does for Samuel. Remember that after that third round of mistaking God's voice for Eli's, 
Eli, the adult, finally says, oh, it might be God speaking to you. Go back and listen again. And then Samuel is able to hear God's voice for the first time, thanks to Eli's encouragement. And as I mentioned, it certainly won't be the last time Samuel listens for God's voice. Samuel will be listening to God speak for the rest of his life. If there is a young person in your life in whom you see gifts and talents, tell them. Tell them more than once if you can. Keep telling them and encouraging them. And if someone sees gifts in you, whatever your age, and they invite you to use those gifts, try it. Even if you feel unsure yourself, discernment isn't done in isolation. We can build each other up and edify each other's spiritual gifts. We can help one another see God at work in our lives. The same thing happened in this gospel story that we read from John's gospel. In this story, Jesus is speaking, so it's pretty clear it's God's voice. Unless, of course, you didn't know yet that Jesus was God incarnate. And at the beginning of Jesus' public ministry, that wasn't clear to everyone around him. They were still figuring out who Jesus was. So in this story that we read, Philip receives this invitation to discipleship directly from Jesus. Follow me, Jesus says. And Philip is convinced that Jesus is the Messiah, so he says yes right away. Then he goes out himself and extends the invitation to discipleship to Nathanael. I found the Messiah, God incarnate, he tells Nathaniel. Let's follow him. But Nathaniel is not quite sure. He's from Nazareth? Surely God's Messiah could not come from Nazareth. You must be mistaken about who this person is. Now, I will just say, if Nathaniel thinks that Jesus' hometown is the, most, the biggest surprise about him, Nathaniel has another thing coming. But Philip doesn't give up. In the face of Nathaniel's skepticism, he invites Nathaniel to come experience God's presence in Jesus for himself. And Nathaniel does. And he is won over, and he is forever changed. We don't hear a lot about Nathaniel in the rest of the New Testament, but he is listed among the disciples who are with the risen Jesus after Easter. So we know that Nathaniel sticks with Jesus from here on out. He becomes a faithful follower, all because Philip was willing to issue this invitation, was willing to stay with Nathaniel through his doubt, was willing to help him come experience God's presence for himself. That's another important lesson we might learn from these texts today about how God speaks in our lives. It's not the same for each of us. Remember how Eli helped Samuel realize that God was speaking to him, but Eli still didn't get to hear that message from God directly. Eli and Samuel had different ways of listening to God. Likewise, in our gospel story, Philip heard this direct invitation to follow from Jesus, and he was ready to accept. But Nathanael's path took a different route. Nathanael needed to hear from someone else, from his friend Philip first. And then he needed to have his own experience with Jesus before he could step into discipleship. We are all listening for the same God, but we don't all listen in the same way. For some of us, perhaps God does speak like a voice we can hear. For some of us, we hear God's voice through the encouragement and teaching of others. For some of us, it's in silence or song or nature that we hear God best. Some of us are especially gifted at listening to God speak through scripture. This is one reason why Paul, the Apostle Paul, is always talking about the church as a body. We're all listening for and following the same God, but each of our paths is a little bit different. Our spiritual gifts are different. Our spiritual needs are different. We each offer a unique wisdom and a unique experience of God that others can benefit from and learn from. And by listening to one another, in a way, we are also listening to God. 
I have had people tell me that they have seen angels or that they have heard God speak to them directly. I have had people tell me they think God was setting them aside as a prophet. And even when it sounds wild, I try to be really open because God does speak. I try to step into the process of discernment with them and test how they might respond to God and use their gifts to serve God's mission in the world because that's what God's word does. It speaks love to others. It invites others in. It serves others. It builds others up. But if you're someone who feels like you've never heard God speak directly, don't discount that God can still be speaking in your life. It doesn't have to be fancy or formal. I love this line from the Christian mystic and writer Evelyn Underhill. She wrote, try to see your ordinary daily life as the medium through which God is teaching your soul and respond as well as you can. Then you won't need in order to receive God's lessons to go outside your normal experience. I love that sentiment that God is teaching our souls just through our daily living. We don't have to go somewhere else or do something different to find God because God can find us right where we are. God is speaking to you right now in the life you are already living, in the way that is fitting for your spiritual path. And God is doing that for the person sitting on your right and for the person sitting on your left. Isn't that a marvel, church? Aren't we fortunate to get to listen to God in the midst of faithful community? The Congregational Church, the UCC, they have this motto, kind of like the ELCA says, God's work, our hands. The United Church of Christ has this motto that goes, God is still speaking. God is still speaking. And to shorthand it, sometimes they just use one symbol, a comma. Don't put a period where God has put a comma, they say. Don't discount that God still speaks in the lives of faithful believers today. Listen closely. Listen bravely. Listen together. What do you hear God saying to you? Amen.